Johnnies and Jennies, it's Shannon from the Trinosphere, where Timmy, Johnny, and Spike battle over all things EDH. Thrones of Eldraine is out, so we're building decks around the new legendaries from that set. Be sure to like and subscribe. Liking lets us know to keep working on these kinds of deck techs, that you guys actually enjoy this kind of content. Subscribing gets you notifications when the other deck text based around the other legendaries comes out, and also the gameplay featuring these deck lists, which will be coming out as well. On to a Yara, first of Lockthwait. This is a triple black 2-3 elf noble that says whenever a Yara or another black creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Note here that it doesn't say non-token. This means when we make tokens, a Yara it drains. She also has tap and sack another black creature to draw a card, which is a very good second ability. So right off the bat, the first thing that comes to mind, make as many bodies as fast as you can. I think a Timmy would build this deck using Army of the Damned, Dark Salvation, Empty the Pits, and Dread Summons to try and produce 40 bodies as fast as possible. But we're not building a Timmy list, we're building a Johnny list, so instead we're going to focus on creating an infinite loop, allowing us to play the exact same creature an infinite number of times. There is a ton of ways to do this in Mono Black. Some of them are very popular and some of them are more obscure, so let's take a look at four different ways to do so. The first combo is a really popular one used in a lot of other decks, and that involves Gravecrawler and Phyrexian Altar. Gravecrawler being a 1 mana 2 1 zombie that can't block but can be casted from our graveyard as long as we control another zombie. And Phyrexian Altar being a 3 mana artifact that says you may sacrifice a creature to add 1 mana of any color to your mana pool. So you can see these cards are obviously a great combo together. You sacrifice Gravecrawler and add a black to your mana pool, then you use that black mana to recast Gravecrawler from your graveyard, assuming you have another zombie. So that is the one weak point in this deck. Ayara herself is not a zombie. So we're taking a trade-off here. Other decks that have zombies as their commanders would have a much easier time recasting Gravecrawler out of their graveyard, but they don't have that finishing piece, the thing that does damage their opponents every time they do so. So in both instances in each of these decks, we're digging for that other piece. In this deck, we're looking for another zombie so that we can recast Gravecrawler. In those other zombie-helmed decks, they're looking for a Blood Artist or a Diagraph Captain to drain their opponents to death. If you don't want to spend $22 on Phyrexian Altar, you can also run Carnival of Souls instead. This two-man enchantment says whenever a creature comes into play, you'll lose a life and add a black mana to your mana pool. So you'll have to have another sack outlet for Gravecrawler, but assuming you can sacrifice Gravecrawler to something else, when you pay one black mana to put him back into play, Carnival of Souls will cause you to lose a life and then give you a black mana effectively making all subsequent casts of Gravecrawler free. Or similarly, Pitiless Plunderer is a 4 mana 1-4 that says one of our non-token creatures dies, create a treasure artifact token that can be sacked for mana of any color. So in the same instance, we can sack Gravecrawler and create a treasure, then use that treasure to recast Gravecrawler, an infinite loop. On to the next combo, a little bit less popular, but still seen in a lot of decks, is Ashnod's Altar plus Nim Death Mantle. Ashnod's Altar, similar to Phyrexian Altar, allows us to sacrifice our creatures, and this one adds two colorless mana to our mana pool instead of one colored mana. Nim Death Mantle is a two mana equipment that says, when a creature gets a plus two, plus two, intimidate, and it becomes a black zombie. It costs four to equip, but most importantly, it says whenever a non-token creature is put into our graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay four generic mana. If you do, return that card to the battlefield and attach Nim Death Mantle to it. So whenever one of our non-token creatures dies, Nim Death Mantle triggers and gives us the option to pay four generic mana to immediately recur that creature and put it back on the battlefield. So if we use that with any creature that generates extra bodies when it enters the battlefield, for example, Grave Titan, the 6 mana 6-6 six, six death touching giant that says when it enters the battlefield or attacks, it creates two 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens, we can create an infinite loop here. We simply resolve Grave Titan, he comes in the battlefield and he creates two 2-2 two, two zombies, we sack one of those zombies for two colorless mana, then we sack Grave Titan himself for an additional two colorless mana, bringing us up to four colorless mana, and his death will trigger Nim Death Mantle, giving us the option to use that four colorless mana to immediately put Grave Titan back into play. When we do so, Grave Titan enters the battlefield again, creating another wave of zombies. So we're actually netting an additional zombie every time we go through this iteration. But more importantly, we're having three bodies enter the battlefield every time we loop through. This will trigger a Yara three times to drain our opponents for three life. And we can do this an infinite number of times to kill our opponents. Similar cards that we run in this deck to Grave Titan, generating extra bodies, are Sling Gang Lieutenant, the 4 mana 1 1 Goblin from Modern Horizons that when it enters the battlefield it creates two 1 1 Goblins, and we can sacrifice Goblins to have target player lose a life and gain a life. So very much on theme with the non-combat centric burn style of a Yara. We also have a Horrent Overlord, the 7 mana 6 6 flying demon that says when it enters the battlefield, it creates 1 1 black harpies creatures with flying. 
equal to our devotion to black. And this is a heavily devoted deck. I mean, our commander is triple black on three. And we have a lot of other enchantments. They're a lot less susceptible to board wipes and will hang out a lot longer throughout the game. And additionally, we have Priest of Gix. He doesn't generate extra bodies, but he generates mana when he enters the battlefield. So for three mana, we get a two, one human cleric minion that when it enters the battlefield, it adds triple black to our mana pool. So immediately he refunds his, his casting cost. So if we put him on the battlefield, get three black to our mana pool, then we sack him to Ashnod's altar. We now have five mana in our mana pool. We only need four of that to trigger Nim Deathmantle to put Priest of Gix back into play. So this loop actually generates infinite black mana, which is pretty useful because we can actually start this loop without a Yara in play and have no mana left over. And it'll slowly generate enough black mana for us to cast a Yara. She could cost 21 mana somehow. She's died that many times. But this, this loop will allow us to generate infinite black mana so we can then cast a Yara from our command zone and then keep cycling this loop to kill everyone. The next combo is less of a combo and more of a one-shot synergy, and that is Plague of Vermin. The seven mana sorcery says starting with you, each player may pay any amount of life and repeat this process until no one pays life. Then each player puts a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token into play for each one life he or she paid. This is a one-shot spend all the life that we can afford to drop an army into play play and then drain our opponents out with a Yara. So if we're at 40 life and a Yara is in play, we can spend 39 life. Sure, we'll, we'll go down to one and we'll lose 39 life, but we'll create 39 rats. And that'll trigger a Yara 39 times, which means our opponents will lose 39 life and then we'll get that 39 life back. So we'll be back at 40 and everyone else will be at one or dead. This is a bit of a riskier play, but it is worth noting that the, the way the sequencing works here is that your opponents can't kill a Yara with a spell in the stack after you've chosen to start paying life. So if you cast a spell and your opponents freak out and they destroy a Yara, you can opt to pay zero life here or just one life or two or three life. They can't gotcha after you spent 39 life and killing a Yara and putting you in a really bad spot. The next combo up is Bolus's Citadel and Mortuary. One of my pet cards. Mortuary is a four mana enchantment that says whenever any creature is put in the graveyard from play, put that creature on top of your library. And Bolus has said it all being that legendary artifact from War of the Spark, that six mana says you may look at the top card of your library at any time and you may cast the top card of your library by paying life instead of mana. It also has a relevant second ability, which is good in this deck. Tap and sack 10 non-land permanents to each opponent loses 10 life. Because we're our kind of a group slug burn deck that slowly whittles down everyone's health down, it is very possible to reach a point where we have a bunch of extra bodies from all these different loops that we're going to be sacrificing that we can just pop that last 10 life out from underneath them because they forgot Bolus has said it all does something else. So the way this, this loop works is that Mortuary puts creatures back on top of our library and Bolus has said it all allows us to cast those creatures. So if we have a sack outlet, for example, we have a carrion feeder in play. This is a great example of how this loop would, would work infinitely. We have a we have a carrion feeder in play. We sacrifice him to his own ability. Mortuary triggers to put him on top of our library. Then we play him with Bolus of Citadel, losing a life, putting him into play. But hopefully we have a Yara in play as well. So when he enters the battlefield, he triggers a Yara, and each of our opponents lose life, and we gain that one life back. Now we're, we're back at square one. We can sacrifice him again and create this loop an infinite number of times to drain our opponents to death. Another replacement for Bolus Citadel, mainly because Ayara has such a good second ability, is Thornbite Staff. The two mana shaman equipment that says a crypt creature has pay two and tap to deal one to any target, and whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, untap this creature. It also auto equips two shamans, and it costs four to equip otherwise. The most important thing to note here is that with a card like Priest of Gix, one that refunds his own mana cost, and a Yara equipped with a Thornbite Staff, we can then tap a Yara to sacrifice Priest of Gix. Now, since sacrificing is part of the cost and not the effect, the effect will go on the stack, but then so will Mortuary's effect. Mortuary's effect will go on the stack to put Priest of Gix on top of our library, and then we can resolve a Yara's draw a card ability. So now we draw the Priest of Gix. And since he effectively gave us the three black mana when he entered the battlefield the first time, we can use the mana he generated to recast him immediately putting him back into play, and then we sacrifice him with a Yara again, since she untaps every single time she sacrifices anything with Thornbite Staff equipped. All right, so those are the those are the big combos that we're gonna be playing with. What else is in the 99? Of course, this is a sack-centric deck, so we're gonna have some sack engines, cards that are really good at sacrificing creatures. So a good example of this, of course, is the Carrion Feeder, which we mentioned earlier was excellent with Mortuary and Bolus' Citadel combo. 
Uh, it's also a zombie, so it can it can feed grave crawler combos as well. We're gonna run Chittering Witch. This new four mana two two human warlock enters the battlefield, creating rats equal to the number of opponents we have. So on average, maybe three. It also and it has a second ability that says two mana and sack a creature. A target creature gets negative two, negative two. So we can fling around disfigures by turning bodies into removal. We have Ghoul Caller Gisa, the, the five mana three four human wizard that has an ability that says for a black and tap, sacrifice another creature. Put X two two black zombie creature tokens into the battlefield where X is the sacrifice creature's power. So effectively, you can turn one zombie into two zombies or turn a big creature into a lot of zombies. We have Viscera Seer, the classic one mana one one vampire wizard that can sack a creature to scry. It helps us filter out dead draws when we don't want to draw lands and when we need to turn bodies. When our opponent's board wipes us, it allows us to scry a bunch of times. Then we also have Whisper Blood Liturgist. This four mana two two human cleric has the ability to tap and sack two creatures to return any creature from our graveyard to the battlefield. So even though it's a two for one deal, uh, this card is excellent with Thornbite Staff. It also gives us the ability to turn tokens back into valuable creatures. Uh, we sacrifice two tokens to recur a Grave Titan. But more importantly, it gives us the ability to sacrifice some of our value creatures early game and not worry about it because we're gonna be able to recur them late game. So some examples of things we're gonna sack include our Sack Fodder. Uh, we have Bitter Blossom and creating a steady stream of 1-1 one, one flyers that we can sack. Of course, we lose a life each turn, but as soon as Yara comes into play, that means our opponents are going to be paying for our Bitter Blossom. They're going to be losing a life each turn, and our net change will be zero. We have Blood Soaked Champion and Reassembly Skeleton. They're all similar to Grave Crawler. They, they may be worse rates for recursion, but they're still great engines especially for sinking mana into when we have things like Nykthos Shrine to Nyx regularly generating 10 mana, or we're just sacking them over and over and over again with Phyrexian Altar and Ashnod's Altar to generate shit tons of mana. We're also going to have Pawn of Ulamog, Sifter of Skulls, Open the Graves, and Ogre Slumlord, all of which trigger on death to create an additional body. So this kind of turns in the instance of the Nim Death Mantle Ashnod's combo, all of our creatures into Grave Titans. It gives all of our creatures extra bodies associated with them so that we can sack them for mana. And then we're going to run Endric Sar, Master Breeder, Ophiomancer, Dark Salvation, and Kalidus Trader of Get as extra ways to generate bodies. Some of these have a bunch of upside, uh, some of them are removal. These cards are just great value engines. Since our deck is based on draining our opponents to death, we have some other cards dedicated to that cause. We have Bonti's Monument, which helps discount our creatures, and it also effectively can replace a Yara in the case of Mortuary and Bolus's Citadel or Gravecrawler. This one does the draining as well, so if a Yara is indisposed, maybe she was turned into a tree by Song of the Dryads, Bonti's Monument can double as a backup. We have Crypt Gas and Pontifa Blight getting us into that extort game. The former gives us extra mana that we can then use to extort our spells, but the latter gives all of our creatures the opportunity to extort, so we can cast a single spell and with five tokens extort five times. We also have Grey Merchant of Asvidel. This deck is heavily devoted, like I mentioned before. Our commander is already triple black. We have enchantments like Dark Prophecy, which is triple black, so it's very easy for Grey Merchant to get up to 10 or so life. And then, of course, we have Bolsa Citadel, which can chomp the last 10 out of their life totals before they even realize it. The one aristocrat-style creature we do run is Zulaport Cutthroat. I, we don't need to run a whole lot of these, not like other aristocrat decks. We don't need to run like all the Blood Artists and the Falcon Wrath Nobles, all those cards, because we have one in our command zone. And we're more focused on assembling one combination of cards rather than trying to go wide with a bunch of these in play. On to our ramp removal and draw. Ramping is a little hard when our commander costs triple black, but we do run Dark Ritual, allowing us to get Ayara out on turn one. Arcane Signet and Charcoal Diamond guarantee us a turn three Ayara. It, it kind of protects us as an insurance policy against accidentally drawing a land that produces colorless mana. And we're also going to keep running Mana Crypt and Soul Ring. They're less useful for casting Ayara, but they are good for paying your tax. But more importantly, they're very good for helping us assemble combo pieces on the same turn. It's a, it's a bad policy as a Johnny to try and, try and cast something like a Ashton's Altar or a Phyrexian Altar and then pass turn, hoping that we can untap and cast a second piece. That gives our opponents way too many opportunities to disrupt our combo. So having some extra mana allows us to cast maybe one of these altars and maybe one of these other, other combo pieces in the same turn. Onto removal, we have some matchup consideration removal spells in here because I know I'm going to be going up against a Torbrand Thane of Red Fell deck. So I put in a little extra removal because I don't want to be dead to Pyrohemia or Aether Flash when it resolves. We're going to be running Attrition in this matchup. Uh, I generally do not like spells that only hit black creatures, but I know that none of my opponents are going to be playing black creatures. So this doubles as a great control piece as well as a sack engine. 
Uh, we're going to run Gate Diphyrexia Meteor Golem, giving us the ability to affect non-creature permanents, something that Black is notoriously bad at doing. And then for creature removal, we're going to have Go for the Throat, Ravenous Chupacabra, Plague Crafter, Toxic Deluge, and Damnation. Because a lot of ways to clear threats off the board, and that's something that we're okay doing because we are graveyard-centric, we can recur things out of our graveyard, and we have a lot of permanents that are not creatures. So it's going to be an okay deal to wipe out our opponents if it costs us one or two creatures. We're also going to run Malicious Affliction and Tragic Slip, which both gain upside once we sacrifice one of our own creatures. For draw, we're going to use a lot of draw here as a way to draw into our combo pieces rather than using tutors to cheat our way into assembling them. It's just more fun that way. It makes for more dynamic and varying games, but of course if you want to be more consistent, you would put in a lot more tutors in this, in this instance. I'm going to be running Costly, Plunder, Skull Clamp, and God Eternal Bantu, which are sack sources. They can sacrifice our creatures to trigger our various effects, as well as draw us a bunch of cards in the process. We're going to run Dark Prophecy, Midnight Reaper, Grim Harispex, and Liliana Dreadhorde General as our main draw engines, things that consistently draw us cards as we're sacrificing things and going through our loops. We're going to run Sight and Blood and Read the Bones as backups in case we get board wiped and we've got literally nothing left. We don't want to be uh, stuck with a Costly Plunder in our hands and no creatures on the battlefield. And then we're also going to run Dust Legion Zealot as an early game cantripping body that is great for e an easy sacrifice later on. To finally run out our list, we have our two utility cards, Demonic Tutor and Expedition Map. We do have that one tutor just for a tiny insignificant amount of consistency, and also Expedition Map helps us get those big mana generating Nykthos, Shrine of, Shrine of Nyx, Cabal Coffers, and Urbor pieces as necessary. All right guys, that wraps up my Ayara the Black Perforos list. What do you think? I had a lot of fun building it and I've played it a couple times and it feels like a pretty strong one. I'm a bit of a bigger fan of, of Sir Conrad the Grim because his ability is a little bit more unique. He has some more play with him, being able to mill yourself to trigger him, being able to shuffle your graveyard into your library to trigger him. Those seem like much more fun, Johnny, unique ways to build around. But Ayara is a much more consistent commander. She costs less, she devotes more, she has that tap and sack a creature to draw a card ability. She's a much more consistent streamlined version of that deck. She is definitely worth checking out if you're thinking about it. But did I miss anything? Are there any cards that you think are really good in Ayara or any deck lists around Ayara that you've built? Be sure to link them down below in the comments so I can check them out. If you're interested in buying any cards, be sure to follow our affiliate link down below. It leads you to TCGplayer.com. When you buy cards using our affiliate link, we get a small kickback from TCG Player, so that would really help out the show. So if you're interested in buying cards from this list, be sure to follow the link below. Alright guys, that's a wrap. This is Shannon from the Trinosphere signing off. As always, keep brewing my friends.